a project on the evaluation of green technology using biofilters and physical traps to assist in the control of the sea louse. Sea lice are a common and natural external parasite that affects salmon worldwide. It impacts both wild and cultured salmon, although in slightly different ways. Current strategies in aquaculture are using agricultural models to try and control these parasites, primarily with the use of pesticides. The major problems with this approach are the non-target impacts to other species, and the slow development of pesticide resistance from the target organism. In agriculture, newer strategies have evolved around the use of alternate control measures such as natural predators, traps and lures. Although the terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems are obviously different, many of the ecological processes are the same, and therefore terrestrial strategies may be applicable in the control of sea lice. The objectives of the research were to evaluate the efficiency of predators such as filter feeders to control sea lice at early life stages, and to investigate sea lice behaviours that may be conducive to developing a trap and lure system. In turn, this could be used to concentrate and remove early life stages of the sea lice from aquaculture sites. The initial stage was to set up a sea lice hatchery, consisting of secure holding tanks and tubes. Sea lice egg strings would then be introduced to the containers and allowed to hatch into Noplii. The video shows the Noplii stacked in egg strings that were removed from an adult louse and hatching over a three hour period. You can see how the eggs are packed like pancakes in the string and upon hatching the egg sacs swell and the Noplii are released. These free-living, non-parasitic development stages, including egg strings, noplii and copepodids, could all be hatched and contained within the hatchery. The next step was to test the possibility of the blue mussel as a filter-feeding predator of the sea lice in their development stages. The test showed great result when contained to a thousand milliliter jar, and so tests were also carried out on larger scales with the introduction of an artificial current. After dissecting and PCR testing the muscle guts, we could confirm the presence of the digested sea lice within the muscles. Another element was to investigate behaviours of the free swimming stages of sea lice. Tests were carried out on a number of stimuli including colour preference and chemical odours such as fish mucus and salmon feed. The chemical preference testing was done using a Y splitter to observe the lice moving towards a branch of treated water or control water. One stimuli the sea lice showed a strong preference to was light. The video shows that after 10 minutes, large numbers of noplii made positively phototactic movements towards the illuminated side of the tank and remained there up to an hour later. This response is currently being used in field trials to develop a behavioral light trap to remove sea lice from the water. If the continuing trials on the use of a light trap and filter feeding predators such as mussels are successful, then it could reshape the setup of traditional aquaculture sites to incorporate these new control mechanisms. The last five months of research show that mussels are proving themselves as an effective biofilter for the free swimming stages of sea lice. It also shows that certain behaviours such as that towards light are strongly expressed by the lice and may be used in trap development. Work is expected to continue in the field next year, and there is a strong possibility that alternative approaches will play a key role in the biosecurity measures used in dealing with sea lice issues. This has been a progress report on the Aquaculture Collaborative Research Development Program project being conducted at St. Andrew's Biological Station.